The sort of drum that we keep banging on now is they're a couple, and as far as as long as we are in charge of the show, they will never break up. This is why we make a great team. You with your brains, and me with. You gotta fill that part in. What? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just. Season three, yeah, picks right back up from where season two left off, pretty much. And we kind of always had in the back of our heads that, you know, the Harl Ivy relationship, but we knew that we wanted to spend, you know, the first, say, season and a half with you know, focusing on Harley and her vocation and her career and all of that. Uh, and once she had that sorted, then we would start to get into her complicated feelings about Ivy. And the, the sort of drum that we keep banging on now is they're a couple, and as far as, as long as we are in charge of the show, they will never break up. And that presents an interesting challenge, right? Because we don't want their relationship to be hunky-dory, and they will go through trials and tribulations this season. But, you know, how do we do that without it ever coming to a head, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, with that first episode, we, the writing staff and, and Sarah Peters, who wrote that episode, they very much were, everybody was like, let's give the fans, like, this honeymoon period as well, where we start the episode off, and we give them a lot of, like, Harley and Ivy together, happy having fun before we like toss something in that's going to like cause conflict in the relationship like let's have the conflict come from somewhere else in that first episode and so that's kind of what we did when you're just friends with someone even if they're be you're, they're your best friend when there's like time where you're like ah you know what you can go do that i'm gonna go fuck off somewhere else and like it's not a big deal right but for harley especially and in this season harley doesn't really know a way to be in a relationship where she's not completely devoted and doing everything for her partner it's a bad habit right that she's taken from this shitty relationship she's an appendage yeah and that and she's yeah. trying to transplant it and so we wanted to give this like sort of false feeling at the end of the first episode it ends with harley being like i am i'm committed to you i want to do everything you're going to be doing and it feels like a happy moment right at the end of that first epi episode but what we wanted it to be was this like false idea of this is what a relationship should be right so that we're building through the season about our theme is like these are two characters who want different things and yet can exist within this relationship given their harley and ivy's parallel arcs this season seeing uh, their sort of position on like the moral compass start to to grow apart uh, this is a terrible example but it's like george and kellyanne conway <laughs> like they're a couple but you know but one of the different kinds of evil <laughs> exactly we thought that would be kind of an interesting dynamic um, where like your your work becomes kind of a little bit at odds with each other, but like you're still in that committed relationship at home. I mean, yeah, it was it was a blast for us. <laughs> yeah, we I mean, we knew that this season we wanted to have the season kind of culminate in in the <laughs> without spoiling it too much. There is a movie, uh, a, a Thomas Wayne biopic. That, that is sort of a, a Scorsese-esque, like Aviator-esque kind of uh, look at his life and ultimate demise <laughs> that everyone's familiar with. And we thought it would be fun to have somebody like James Gunn, who is this like, he's Guardians of the Galaxies, the Suicide Squad, it's like the popcorn insanity that, that is kind of, uh, I would say, like tonally akin to the stuff that we're trying to do. Yeah. And wouldn't it be fun if, if his character was like, nah, you know what, I'm gonna win an award now and I'm gonna direct this movie starring Billy Bob Thornton as Thomas Wayne, and Billy Bob Thornton voices himself playing Thomas Wayne, which was a blast as well. But we knew James was a fan of the show. I contacted him, uh, just shot in the dark on Twitter. We don't know each other like personally, really, like or in real life. Uh, within 15 minutes, he had, he had gotten back to us and was like, I'm in. A couple weeks later, remotely direct voice directing him from the Peacemaker set or like he was in a recording booth up in uh, Vancouver while he was shooting Peacemaker and yeah had him for like an hour and knocked out all of his stuff and he was a great sport and yeah talking about like meta stuff like there's a joke that that got that we ultimately felt like we needed to cut which was James Gunn sitting on Clayface who has morphed into a massage chair and uh, <laughs> because James Gunn had been complaining of back problems, Clayface is trying to impress him. So that's the way that he does it. And he's like, James Gunn, sit on me. And James Gunn sits and Clayface starts vibrating. And James Gunn is like, it's like Thanos snapped and I can feel my anus again. And then Clayface is like, who's Thanos? <laughs> and then we're out. But we were like, ow, oh, this like breaks the world. Like we don't want to acknowledge like that there's an MCU in the DCU. <laughs> so yeah, yeah.
that was like truly a collaboration between like writers, animators, like the staff, the animation. Like, I can't remember how, how it came up first. Was it in Sarah's draft? Did she just write that in the draft? Or I don't. I am afraid to get it wrong, so I don't really want to say. It, but I do feel like the uh, Jen Coyle, who's our supervising producer and is sort of in charge of all the animation, was. I, I feel like she was pretty instrumental. <laughs> yeah, because in I remember at one point they were like, "Oh, we need to cut." 30 seconds from this episode and Jen Coyle was like, do not fucking touch yeah. Mouse Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Even the, the studio was like, everyone from like the executives of the studio too. and They like, were like, everybody yeah. wanted, everybody was like, nobody touch you, cut whatever you want, nobody yeah. touches Mouse Bruce Wayne. Yeah. It was like such a weird moment. We in were the in show like too. a real like kill your darling situation and they were like, do not touch the mouse. Mouse Batman exists. <laughs> he will show up at some other point, not in this season, but if we get future seasons, you know, season nine could just be about Mouse Batman. I think they might be rats, and I think we called it Bat Rat. Bat Rat. Yeah. Yeah. There's one joke that I that we just pushed it too far, and we were like, this is too mean. Towards the end of the season, um, we get to see the the Thomas Wayne biopic, and Bruce goes. And to the premiere. To the premiere. And you know how, like, you go to the arc light, and there's, like, the, the here's the costumes from this uh, thing, and they're in a glass case. And so they have the costume for little Bruce Wayne, and Bruce is, grown up Bruce is staring at it, and he's like, why, there, in the costume, there's a piss stain. <laughs> and because and he's peed his pants when he watched his parents die. And Bruce is like, why do they have to do that? And that never happened. Scene. Yeah, that he's never like, ha- that never happened. I've spilled yogurt. It wasn't pee. And, they, <laughs> and then in the movie, when his parents die, there's like, he pisses himself like 30 seconds. <laughs> And so that was in our original outline of it. And then I think we all were just like, this is so mean. (laughs) I think even to a fake person, this is so mean. So then we pulled it out. 